What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. We got a very special guest. We got a radio hall of famer, a New York Times bestseller, uh, amazing father, amazing husband. Uh, let me know. Let me know what, if I'm missing anything. Nah, I'll, I'll stop you when you stop telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, all the God. Appreciate you tuning in with us. Hey, appreciate you for having me, my brother. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So basically for this special episode, we have uh, two episodes in the same day and to help educate and inform people of the work of Dr. King and how his work to this day still uh, reverberates through the nation. So, you know, thank you again for tuning in with us and giving us, lending us your voice to help educate people. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. So for, in your opinion, you know, speak to the work of Dr. King and how his work still, you know, affects us to this day in 2021. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to me is the greatest political revolutionary to ever walk the face of the earth. And, and the reason he's the greatest political revolutionary to ever walk the face of the earth is, is simple. When it, when it comes to actual policy and, and radical change, he got things done. You know, whether it was voting rights, civil rights, MLK actually got this government to move on radical change that you know, ultimately enables us to celebrate the things we celebrate now. There is no Kamala Harris being vice president or Barack Obama being president if Dr. King didn't push for racial equality the way that he did back then. You know, I mean, think about everything that the social justice and civil rights activists are trying to get pushed now. You know, yeah. whether it's defunding the police, prison reform, um, getting the right resources allocated to the black community to improve our schools. Or, or just provide opportunities for us, period. Think about how hard it is to get the government, state or local, to act on that, you know? Think mm -hmm. about how long the fight has been to just get weed decriminalized, not even not even get weed legalized federally, just decriminalized on right. a federal level. Think about how long fights like that have been going on and how hard it is to get policy changed. MLK and his crew, they got radical policy changes implemented a couple of times. So for me, he's the greatest, you know, you know, political revolutionary, you know, but, 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 and just, just as far as black people between him and the honorable Elijah Muhammad, I just don't think it's anyone who, who's, who's done more for us as a people here in America. Matches up. He's almost like the Jordan of uh, civil rights. And yeah. Like the best, like the, like the best to ever do it for real, for real. So how, what steps does the, the country need to take to help, you know, continue the work that Dr. King has done for us to see like, you know, progression. And even though we have seen changes in the country, slow change is still like change, you know, or progression rather. So what steps are needed for the country to help make things more equal for people who look like you or not? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't give you all the steps cause I don't, I don't know all the steps, but my yeah, person nothing happens overnight. So yeah, well. yeah, but my <laughs> personal answer, I think the answer lies in what a lot of people say ultimately got Martin Luther King Jr. killed, and that's that's economics. You know, the only thing that's going to create radical change in this society is economic empowerment, you know, financial freedom. Black people and poor people in general need to be awarded the same opportunities to to live and thrive in this country as, 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 as others. You know, poverty is what leads to crime. Poverty is what leads to mental health issues. That's why the pivot Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was making from civil rights to fighting against income equality, it scared the hell out of America because it's too easy to control the people who are poor and disenfranchised, but it's, it's almost impossible to control the people who are rich and, and, and potent. And, and listen, I know everybody can't be rich, but everyone should have a fair shake to put food on their kid's table, to have a, a roof over their head. So when you ask me what's the necessary change we need, uh, right now, it's 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 income. It's the fight. It's the it's fighting against income inequality. You know, people with money control the politicians. People with money fund political campaigns. And when these politicians get in office, they are beholden to who? You know what I mean? The folks that's holding the purse strings. So financial freedom to me, that's how that's how black people can 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 see real change. That's something that needs to be implemented. For sure. And I feel like even when it comes to just living i feel like people should have just a living wage you know it's, yeah i mean you know, people always talk about universal basic income right mm -hmm. that's that was a martin luther king jr concept yeah you know what i mean martin luther king jr came up with the concept of universal basic income and when, when i talk about you know that ultimately leading to his demise yes it's plenty of people 
You know, it's plenty of things you can Google or research or study where they'll tell you that it wasn't the civil rights that got Martin Luther King Jr. killed. It was him fighting against income, you know, and equality. You know, he was, he was uh, about to lead the Poor People's March on Washington, mm-hmm. where he was going to bring, you know, people of all races, all genders, all sexualities together. And it was just under the, the guise of poverty. You know what yes. I mean? The fact that people are, are poor. And man, that would have that would have changed America and revolutionized America in a whole different way. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. would have been the person who probably would have got black people to get reparations. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you've ever seen that old interview with Martin Luther King Jr. when he was like, We're going to DC and we're going to get our check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so so at the end of the day, he knew what it was. So I, yeah, I feel like you know, financial freedom, you know, that's 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 how we'll see real change. Yeah, I, and even like the reparation conversation, I feel like people always bring up who's going to pay for it, how, like, where's the money coming from? But you think like historically, anytime something of that magnitude happened, they, they always, any country always found the money, so. Man, they get the money, they, they find the money for anything else. Yeah. You know what I mean? We saw them pull $1.3 trillion out of their ass last year to give to all these corporations during the coronavirus pandemic. And that's one of the reasons that America will never truly get the way it needs to be. That's why it bothers me when I hear, um, you know, after, after, after the, the situation, after the invasion by those domestic terrorists on Capitol Hill happened, you know, last week, you know, first thing Joe Biden jumped out there and said was, this is not America. Yes, the hell it is. And it's always been America. And until we acknowledge it fully, until we tell the doctor that we truly are sick, no healing will begin. And the, 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 the fastest way for America to begin the healing process of its original sin, which was slavery, is through reparations. Like, it's literally just that simple. Sit down with the greatest scholars that we have, people that, that, that have been studying this work forever, whether it's, you know, uh, Sandy Darity, whoever it is, and sit down with those brothers, sit down with those sisters, and, you know, figure out how we can come up with a, a great economic equity package for black people in this country. I love what Robert Smith was, was, was proposing with the 2% plan, where these corporations, the biggest corporations in the country, give 2% of their um, net income every, every, every year, mm-hmm. you know, to, 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 to black banks. Put that in black banks. That yeah. way black people will be able to get, you know, housing. That way black people will be able to get loans to start small businesses. Like, it's a lot of different ways that they could they could figure out how to atone for that original sin, which is slavery. They 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 could find the money if they if they wanted to. Keyword yeah. is if they wanted to. Because mm-hmm. I even think about with like uh, I believe Senator Elizabeth Warren, she was pushing for like uh, student loan forgiveness to help close that uh, that wealth gap for kids so who are still owing let's say like fifty thousand, forty thousand dollars in debt coming out of school. Mm-hmm. So even like little things like that to help close the gap go a long way. <clears throat> Absolutely. And then last question, you kind of touched on a little bit, you know, seeing the invasion of uh, Capitol Hill and, you know, for people who look like you and I, just like the Black community in general, you kind of see the disparity as far as like how they get treated when it comes to things like that versus us, you know, protesting and things of that nature. So uh, how do you think it affects just the psyche or just like the mental aspect of people just constantly seeing it on TV every day? And what can we do to help you know, maintain our mental health? Oof, I mean, listen, man, it's a never ending cycle of trauma. It's mm-hmm. a never ending cycle of depression. It's a never ending cycle of low self-esteem. And, and that's why I'm so big on black people being mentally healthy. You know, we have generations and generations of pain, mm-hmm. generations and generations of hurt, generations and generations of, 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 of trauma that was inflicted on us by this wicked system. And so many of us have, you know, we've never dealt with that pain. We never dealt with that hurt. We never dealt with that trauma. You know, we feel that hurt and, and, and that pain and, and we bring that back to our communities, our families, and we end up hurting other people who look just like us. You know, we didn't put ourselves in these situations. We aren't bringing this trauma on ourselves, but we have to take responsibility, you know, for, for, for messes we make, even if somebody else caused us to make that mess. Your oppressor isn't going to give you the problem and the solution. Okay, all the solutions we have to find on our own. 
yes, we have generational curses. You know, the trauma began when they brought us here against our will. But if you have the opportunity to break those curses and be a generational blessing, then that's on you to go out there and take advantage of the resources available to do just that. I am in a constant process of healing through therapy. I go to therapy every Friday at three o'clock. I was in therapy, you know, uh, yesterday. We we're doing this on a Saturday. That was yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm in constant, I'm in a constant process of healing through having a sacred purpose coach. I'm in a constant process of healing, you know, through practicing mindfulness via meditation, um, breathing exercises, plant-based medicine, whatever it is. You know, I, I've been going to therapy for the past few years and, and, and my homegirl, Debbie Brown, who's like one of the, the leaders in the mindfulness space, she, she was always telling me to add mindfulness practices, you know, to my, my routine along mm -hmm. with therapy. Because one thing therapy does, therapy can give you the language. It can help you understand the why in regards to your behavior, your triggers, you know, what, your, your, your emotions. Um, but, the, but the act of healing comes into play via actual mindfulness practices. So I don't care if it's yoga, meditation, find actual things you can do to heal your trauma. I do grounding, like I'll go outside, walk barefoot, you know, hug some trees. We used to laugh at the tree huggers back in the day, but it's really, it's really real. You know, there's always gonna be things out there that traumatize us, that, that, that trigger us, you know, and you may not can stop it, but you can do the work to heal and contain it. Yeah. You know? So yeah, man, we got we we gotta really just we gotta really take advantage of these resources that are that are that that are available to help heal our traumas. Cause like I said, we're always gonna be traumatized. Like yeah. this system is going to constantly traumatize us. There's always going to be something that reminds us that according to them, you are inferior. You know what I'm saying? Even though we're not, you know, God didn't create us that way. I mean, think about this, man. I call myself Charlemagne the God. That is the name I, I, I grabbed. I grabbed when I was in high school. I, I call, I used to call myself Charles when I used to be on the block hustling, you know what I mean? It's Cause yeah. you know, I come from a small town. So fiends would see me and probably go tell my parents. So instead of, you know, saying my real name, Leonard, I would say my name was Charles or Charlie. And I mean, I'm reading in a history book that, you know, Charlemagne stands for Charles the Great. So I'm like, oh, that's the on fly. I'm gonna start calling myself that. But the God part came from the 5% teachings of Islam, right? And that's where they teach you that the black man is God. You know, God is a Greek word derived from the Aramic words, guma, oz, the bar, which means wisdom, strength, and beauty. The first letter of each word was used by Greek students when they used to identify their Egyptian teachers, their Egyptian masters. So think about a black man having to call himself God, just to feel like he can wake up and survive the day. Mm -hmm. I can't just wake up and be mediocre. You know what I mean? I can't just wake up and 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 just exist like a, like a white person. I have to say that I am God, cipher divine, just to feel like I belong on this planet because every day of my life, there is somebody or some situation trying to tell me that I am inferior. That Capitol Hill was just another example. We all know that if that was a group of black people, they'd have been dead on the spot. Mm -hmm. just, just like what happens in any other country when it's a, an attempted coup that goes wrong. They line you up, kill you on the spot. If that was, you know, Al Qaeda, you know, Muslim, somebody from another country, that country would have been bombed that very day, yeah. you know? But being that it was a group of white, privileged Americans, they get treated in a whole different manner. And that absolutely positively will do something to you. That's why I am the brother that will tell you, Omar, I love you, I value you, I appreciate you. You know what I mean? You should do that in return to your other brothers because we got to constantly give each other that positive reinforcement because yeah. this system will not. For sure. Charlamagne, I love you. Appreciate you. Love the work you're doing. And I got to respect that energy. So. Thank you, King. And I, and I really do appreciate, man, you know, the, the, the generous donation finish line is making, man, to, to, yeah, to my, my foundation, the Mental Wealth Alliance, which I, which I 
which I haven't fully announced yet, but I, 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 I will be very soon. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's the goal of <clears throat> Community of Voices to help elevate voices like yours or, you know, anyone's in the community to help spread like awareness and information as far as like things that we're going through as a community. And we're on like our 29th episode now. We've wow. donated over half a million dollars between um all the charities and organizations um, from the talent that they choose to send the money to. So yeah, hopefully we keep this going and you know, do something no. good. No, man, you will. You know, like 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 you know, like I said, my 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 organization, that's what we do. We 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 fund you know, other people that are on the ground already doing the work, you know what I mean? So it's like these organizations, like, let's just say Blackman Hill out of Philadelphia, they provide free therapy, you know, for brothers, you know, in, in, in the Philadelphia area, brothers that want to go to therapy, you know, and, and organizations like that may not have the reach that I have, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or they may not have the, 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 the connects that I have, like, with, mm-hmm. like a connection like this. So that money comes to me. And it goes to somebody like them. So Perfect. thank you, my brother. Thank you. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, King. Yeah, thank you. And that's I me. Mean, that's a wrap. I don't want to take up too much of your time. But again, thank you for tuning us and, you know, lending your voice to us and to help spread the word of uh, MLK and his work and, you know, just the country in itself. So appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. And, and oh, fun fact, Martin mm-hmm. Luther King Jr. died uh, suffering from anxiety and depression. Mm because he was not feeling necessarily appreciated. He was getting attacked from all sides. He was getting attacked by his own people who felt like he was an Uncle Tom Coon sellout. And he was getting attacked by white people who felt like he was some type of communist. You know what I mean? So yeah, invest in your mental wealth, people. Because you really don't understand the, the pressure you'd be putting on, on, on some folks. So yes, this is a great conversation. Thank you, Omar. Likewise, thank you. Peace, King. Peace.